Hi, this is Lynn Mann presenting to you Microsoft PowerPoint 2013 Navigating Presentations. Microsoft PowerPoint 2013 has many features to enable the developer to navigate through presentations quickly, smoothly, and even automatically. In this video, you'll learn how to view and print a presentation, build and use presentations with internal and external hyperlinks, as well as action buttons, and create self-running and custom presentations. Most of these features are available in PowerPoint 2010 and 2007, although it might be set up slightly different. For earlier versions of PowerPoint, you might need to do a bit of research on your own to see if these features are available. Microsoft PowerPoint 2013 and other versions of PowerPoint allow you to view your presentation in multiple ways. We'll walk through these each at a time. It also allows you to do several different types of printing, whether it be the slideshow itself or handouts. Let's see what I mean. Let's quickly run through the different views on in PowerPoint 2013. I downloaded this presentation from Microsoft.com. Uh, in the office, they have several PowerPoints up there that you can get for free. This was one of them. So the first view that we have by default is the normal view. For in 2013, it's a little bit different than 2007 and 2010. In the normal view, we only have the slides in the navigation pane, whereas in 2010 and 2007, you have two tabs. One is this mode where you see slides and it's called slides and the other is outline and you can toggle back and forth from those very easily. I'm not too sure why, but in 2013, they split these up. So in normal view, you, the current slide appears in our slide pane and then I can go to any of the other slides just by navigating through the slides in the left hand side. So let's go back to the home page. If I want to change views, all I need to go is the home, or pardon me, view, tab, and then here are my presentation views. So outline view, again in 2010 and 2007, slightly different. It's different. Uh, it has the tabs, but here we have the icons. Instead of the slides on the left-hand side, I actually get the title of the slide and any narrative that's down below. I can also manipulate uh, the narrative right here if I need to by just typing ABC. Or if I need to add another slide, all I need to go is to the slide before it, hit enter, adds a slide, tab will add narrative. So here is my new text. If I want to get rid of text, all I have to do is highlight it and remove it. I don't even have to go to that, that slide. All I do is when I click on it, it changes to. If I have some extra slides in there, I can get rid of them also just by going backspace over the title and it will get rid of the slide. So outline view is very helpful in moving around uh, your narrative. Slide sorter view is great to rearrange your graphic or your slides. So if I wanted two to be actually down here, all I have to do is grab it and drop it. If I wanted a block of them, all I have to do is hold down control and I say seven, eight, nine, click on each one of those and now I move the block and I can move it anywhere I want, the whole entire block. If I want to undo, control Z always does the undo for us. This is a fairly short slideshow, but if I had multiple, like a hundred slides, you'll see a scroll bar on the side that we can manipulate to get to our other slides. The next view is the notes page view. In the notes page view, they'll show one slide at a time and the notes that you've added to it. So this slide has no notes, but this slide does. Also this one. Reading view is somewhat like slideshow view, except it's in a window rather than filling the entire screen. If we want to look to see kind of what our slideshow is going to look like, we can go into reading view and to see what's going on. Now, slideshow view is not in the presentation views. It's actually on a tab all by itself. So slideshow is on the slideshow tab and I can start it from the beginning or the current slide. If I start it from the beginning, 
it does a nice presentation of what it's going to show your audience, including any animation, any transitions, any noises, any sound, any narrative. All of that will be in the official slideshow view. If I want to get out of slideshow view, I hit escape. Now there's one more view. It is presenter view. In 2010 and 2007, you had to have dual monitors on your desktop or laptop machine as well as the monitor in which you are presenting to your audience. In 2013, you no longer need that. So if I want to say use presenter view, so on slideshow use presenter view is checked. When I go into slideshow view, I start from beginning and down here's this the ellipses. If I click on the ellipses, show presenter view, you'll see your screen changes slightly. It will have the next slide, any notes that go along with the current slide which is on the left. And I have some options here that are very easy and we'll talk about those later in the video. But if I wanted to view to a certain area, I have that very quickly handy at my disposal. If I wanted to go to all of my slides and pick jump to a slide, I can immediately go to that slide. I can annotate right here in presenter view. So all of this is very handy. This is not what your audience sees. Your audience only sees the left hand part of the screen. They don't see the next slide and they don't see the notes. In 2010 and 2007, again, you were able to do this, but you had to have another monitor to do this. In 2013, you don't have to. It's very, very handy. Before I leave the screen, I want to talk about one slight little thing. If I go up into this left-hand corner and say close, that not only closes my slideshow, that does close my whole entire presentation, so my whole entire PowerPoint. So you want to make sure that you do close click end slideshow and not the close all. And now I'm back to my regular mode, whichever view I'm already in. Right now I'm in notes view, I prefer normal. Occasionally having the slideshow isn't enough and you want it printed out for either posterity or for handouts for your audience or your, for yourself. So let's go to the printing area. So under the file tab in the backstage view scroll down to print, click on print, and by default print all slides where the slide is the entire page is the default. It is collated and it's in color. So that is all the default. And right now every text or every slide is on its separate page when you print it out. There are other options. So print selection only print the selected slides. That means I did have to select them before I got in here but that's okay. Uh, if I go back, go down to view, uh, slide short, sorter view, and then I click, hold down control, and I click some of the slides, and then I go into file, print, selected slides, then it will only print the selected size. You see one, jumps, jumps, jumps. There are only five instead of 18. So let me go back and deselect all the slides, go back into print. I can say print only the slide that I'm currently on or a custom range. Custom range is very similar to print selected slides, but if I didn't select it beforehand, I can say, oh, give me two, five, six, eight, and nine, and maybe 13. If I have a range of slides, instead of the comma, maybe it's six through nine. If I do the hyphen, it will now do two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 13. So let's go to the default. Now there's different options on printing the full slide on one page, or I can do two slides, three slides, Three slides is nice, it gives you a little notes area, lines to write on. Four slides horizontal, which means it goes one, two to the right, three, four to the left, fourth to the right. Or vertical, where it says 
first slide, then underneath it is 2, then to the right is 3, and then 4 underneath 3. It's not generally how we read, so it is a little bit more difficult for vertical, but sometimes you need it. We can do six slides horizontal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Vertical. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And 9. Horizontal, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And vertical, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's when dealing with the full page of slides. Notes page will only print one slide with any of the notes that go along with that slide. You can't have more than one slide uh, on the page. It erases your notes. So notes page is only one slide with the notes per page. Outline gives you the title of the slide along with any of the narrative that any text that you have on your page, but it does not give you the graphics. It only gives you the text. So that it is lacking sl slightly, but if you want to save paper and you just need the language, then this is a way to print it. Now on I can collate it by default. It's one, slides uh, pages one, two, three, or I can uncollate it, where it will print pages one, 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 two, 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 three, three, three. Mm. There is landscape orientation, and let me show you a little bit different on how it will look. So this is the six horizontal, gives you a little bit more room, and the slides are slightly larger. If I have notes, you'll see that it wastes a lot of page. Doesn't mean that slide's larger. Just gives you more space on the page in case you had uh, more language or something. If I had outline, you could definitely see I am in landscape orientation. Let's move it back to portrait. And then color, I have my choice of color. Grayscale, which let me go back to full page. This is great. It gives you a little bit of the color changes. For example, here's some gray effects versus pure black and white. Pure black and white basically takes out any color that you had on your page. So your graphics are going to be in pure black and white versus grayscale. Let me go back to those butterflies. And you'll see there's a little bit of distinction there. Well, not for the butterflies, but definitely for some of the other artwork, you'll see that there's more color with the grayscale versus black and white. So those are all of your settings for your printing capabilities. And depending on if your printer can do uh, double-sided or not, that's a, also an option if you have that capability under your printer properties. Let's review what we learned in this video. Microsoft PowerPoint 2013 allows the user to have multiple views, including an easier way to manipulate the presenter view. So whether you want your outline of your text, or if you want your notes view, or in normal view where it shows all your slides, we have multiple views of manipulating our PowerPoint. Printing the same way. We have ways of printing just one slide or multiple slides on one page. We also have an option of printing our notes and our outline. We can print in color, black and white, and grayscale. So many options to use when viewing and printing your PowerPoint.